I'm Michael Serta from the Yellow House Orchestra. First of all, I live in a yellow house. <laughs> it's more of an essence than the figurative house itself. The Yellow House has been a place of gathering for, for many people for a long time. I think the Yellow House Orchestra sort of, sort of tries to take, take advantage of that and say, um, this music is about everybody and sort of everybody is welcome and everybody's hopefully a part of this. So we've just recorded a new record called Pop. What you'll find in Pop is we've constructed a journey. It's sort of a musical journey it's looking at the music business, but also taking you through different genres along the way. And at the end of the day, it's almost kind of admitting that this record is kind of genreless because it's got so much going on. It might as well just be pop. There is a song also on the record called Pop. That's the title track of the record, of course. The song is actually about sort of the music industry and, and the pop world. So it's sort of an ironic take on, on things. And, it, and in the song, we talk a little bit about how I don't believe where this business is gone, and I don't believe it's not about this song. And so we're, 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 we're sort of trying to stand something up and make a bit of a statement, and, and that why can't pop be this? I wanted to do a, a, a really slam and salsa record, and there's no better place in the world to do that in New York than New York City. And Doug Beavers, who's the uh, producer and arranger on the record and the trombone player, and my good friend, uh, there's, he's one of the greatest guys to do that with. Hey, I'm Doug Beavers, uh, trombonist, composer, arranger, producer, um, Grammy Award winner now. We're just wrapping up Yellow House Orchestra, and it's a project I'm thrilled to be a part of. Uh, it's been part of my life for the last year now, and the way it's coming together is amazing. Pop to me is... It's like, what's next? You know, and what can we do? And, and you know, can we upend the traditional definition of pop? What we're doing is we're putting the real deal, I feel, back into what a pop tune should be. You know, and along with that, you know, we've got, you know, some pop stuff, and that's that's where Michael came in with his compositions, and, and it's been so fun to work with that stuff because it's something I don't traditionally get to do, and I, you know, I just jumped in, loved it. So we set out to to making this record, and. I would write my simple songs and I would hand them to Doug and say, Doug, go arrange. And I had a very open mind and sort of released all things to him for a minute. He would come back to me and we'd start jamming from there on what we're gonna do. I said, you know, Michael, I, I wanna do this kind of the way we do like a salsa band, you know, or, or just a live ensemble, you know. We're gonna go in there and cut this live. We're gonna do all the solos live. You know, the scratch vocals, we're gonna, we're gonna sing them live too. Um, because we wanna get the energy of the band. And when we started recording, we got on the other side of the studio and we heard the playback. Man, can you hear it? It's, it's just there, you can feel it. It's just like electricity, you can feel it in the air. Um, and I'm really thrilled with the results and, and that's how we went about it. Totally live recording, you know, and then we're gonna come from there and, and make it the best. <laughs> Um, now Michael brought on Chris Phillips, um, and I basically brought the rest, you know, and I'm, I'm bringing in folks from the New York City, kind of the, the, you know, the legacy salsa scene, you know, guys like George Delgado, um, who's played with everybody, and all kinds of guys, you know, Camilo Molina, um, and I brought on a good horn section, and, and what we do, we have like a great mix of, I think, of folks who have been there, have been around the block, it can hold down the tempo, hold down the time. You know, guys like Robbie Amin, who's just a legend on drums, a Latin uh, jazz drum player. Um, but we also br brought on some fresh talent here. Um, Andrew Gold is a great example, saxophone player. He's a young kid and he plays amazing. I don't know, you know, how many hours this guy practiced, but he really brought it, you know. And uh, one of my students I brought on, because he's sounding so good, Bezrat Tafesi did all the second trombone parts. And uh, he's up and coming here. And as this is the biggest cross-cultural thing you'll ever see. You know, there's all walks of life on this record, which is the way I love it. You know, it's the way it should be. We wrote and arranged about 18, to 18 songs. Um, we didn't put them all on the record. Uh, I, think, I think we're going with just with 12 of them. Um, because I think earlier on in the journey, we thought we were going to make this slamming salsa in Latin jazz record. And so it wasn't until like three quarters of the way through the writing process that we, we had a pivotal moment where we like started taking songs that were a little bit more pop and rock and, and jazz and like that became what the record was about. Um, and so at that point we knew, we found our North Star 
and we kept going. And once we got to that point, it was like one one song after another. And by the time we hit the studio, we were we were ripe and ready to uh, to make something special and differentiated. So what started out as maybe being a what we thought was going to be a slamming salsa record. Um, became this mixture of, of rock, pop, a little funk, even a little bit of reggae in, in, in certain areas. So it's a very different outcome and, it's, and we're excited about that because I think that's what the creative process is about. It's like you put something out there and you, um, and I think what's special about it is it's very organic in that sense. And I think it's, it's, it's authentic, I think it's honest. You know, we agreed to, to get this going um, and we had kind of a loose template as to what we wanted to do and, and I told Michael, look, you know, start getting me songs. And he started firing off songs and, and, um, and in that whole process was a great evolution uh, because at first he was sending me you know, some Latin jazz stuff and, and like maybe a bass lick, you know, kind of like an obscure, you know, a bass lick or, or, you know, some stuff that he just come up with um, on GarageBand, you know. And the thing with Michael Serta, he's got a great pop sensibility and a great, you know, he's a great composer in that sense where it's just some, it's simplistic, but it's, there's great hooks in there and there's great, you know, a lot of good stuff that we can work with. Um, and I think it's very differentiated at the same time because um, you know, we, we weren't afraid, there were no rules, we're not playing in a box. We didn't, we didn't say at the end that this has to be a blank record in, in a certain genre. And I, I'll be very interested to see how people process this um, when it's got a multi-genre approach, like what is that at the end of the day? And who knows, maybe, maybe that's pop.